Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Honest Pod with me, Ashley McAllister. And me, Matthew Haley. <laughs> and this is episode 70. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, 70. Every week is a new episode, and every week I'm amazed that we still do it. I know, I know. I don't know how we managed to have this many conversations about football, <laughs> but we've done it. I know. We've <laughs> done it, guys. We've achieved our goal. Yep, that's yeah. it. Podcast closes now. Bye, everyone. I can't remember how many episodes we're supposed to do in a season. 30. 30. We did 30, yes. We made we 10 this season. <laughs> I know. What? And we had a long break. Oh my goodness. I know. D- doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago when we had Jordan round and we did that? It just feels so long ago. I mean, it would have been like two and a half months then, technically. Yeah, Ooh, ten, yeah. 10 weeks, yeah. Oh my goodness, it my does. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Um, what a world. A lot, I mean, um, a lot has changed. <laughs> I was about to say, could you imagine back then, would we be sitting having <laughs> fucking hell? Oh, my days. Well, Matthew, let me uh, hear all about your week. What's happening? Um, my week has been a little bit up and down, I guess. So, um, keeping busy as you know, like, pottering about the house. I did a big clean. It's so mad, right? I don't know what's wrong with me, but I also know what's wrong with me. So, I definitely did this, um, I would say, last summer, right? So, this is what? I don't know. Nine months, maybe ten where I like emptied out all my clothes and, and you know, like just, I'm, I'm not much of a hoarder. Like I'm, I love throwing things away. Um, cause I don't mm. hold much sentiment if I'm honest in general, like there's very little. Um, and I did a big clean of my room over the past couple of days. Um, and yeah. I did find, um, I've got this tiny little like folder of like things that are, how am I meant to post that, actually? It's quite cute. Like sentimental things. Right. So I've got like, um, a birthday card from one of my ex-boyfriends, which I, I really like it was like one of the first ones i ever had um i got this Aww. birthday present which is so funny so i used to work in a library when i was um 20 um well for a number of years actually part-time and then full-time for a bit and then there was me and, and two of my friends and um she made one of them had made like a, an okay magazine for me and she'd like cut out loads of pictures and she'd put like oh we can't wait to see matt on the x factor and she put like my body like uh, not my body my face on like this big musty body being like oh we've been working at the gym and there's all these articles like about me as a celebrity in OK Magazine <laughs> um, and at the time I was watching House and there was this I cannot remember his name but this is Jesse something I think it's Australian blonde doctor on it and um, his real name is Jesse something um, and I was like obsessed with him and I thought it was so fit and she was like she put like oh um, shock like date with like um sexy house star or something you know <laughs> um and it, it was just really cute and that's something that i'll just keep forever because i was like oh it's so lovely um those sort of things but apart from that everything else got like thrown away i ended up throwing away six bags of things and i was oh, like wow. how the fuck did i do that no idea not a clue um but it happens though, doesn't it it's mad it's mad, yeah. Mm. I got rid of some clothes. There were some clothes I kept last time that I was hoping I might trim down and get into, and it never happened. I was like, I'm just giving up on this dream. I'm not squeezing into these clothes. <laughs> yeah, I always, I like, I, I do the same because I, my weight fluctuates, and I'm just like, oh, do you know what? I'll keep them just in case I get big again. I'm like, well, I shouldn't plan on getting big again. No. Uh, I'll just throw these out, and then all of a sudden I'm big again. I'm like, I have no clothes to fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, surprise! There's inches are back, which I said I'd never get back, but they're back. Mm. No, no, oh, God. no, no. And you kind of like want to be like, okay, I'm going to be like a bit more consistent with my weight, but it just doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, I did that, um, and then towards the end of the week, that I was just um, I was told by my workplace that I'm going to be placed on like the furlough scheme, which obviously isn't the worst thing in the world, but it was a bit disappointing, I guess, because I was hoping like I've been working. Honestly, I've been working since I was at like, 16 um, and yeah. I've never had like a break off work more than a holiday. Right. So um, and even when I went away for like four weeks before, because I was um, a manager, I was like responding and things like that. Yeah. So this will be the first time that I'll be like literally just not working. Um, yeah. So I'm going to have to kind of like find 
well, I've been keeping busy and stuff, but now I really have to try and find my own structure for the days, you know? Um, yeah. Because you're, you're somebody who like likes to have something to do. I need to be given a structure. Like I've never been really good, you know, and this is something that, you know, <laughs> I've spoken to my therapist loads about and stuff. And, and I feel like I'm in a better place to, to provide my own way of being. But before that, and, and, you know, and I still haven't done it to be fair, like to a, a greater extent, um, I work better with a given structure. So if someone gives me something, I can work with it. What I've always struggled to do is just like propel myself forward. You know, and I always say like, I'm not very good at starting from zero, but if you give me something, then I can work with that. And so, you know, having the little or having the work that I was doing last week was helpful because then I'm like, okay, well, I know I need to do this during this time. So that means, oh, I can clean this and then, you know, do these exercises and all these sorts of things and I can cook my meal. But now, I, and I, what I want to avoid is sitting down and watching TV for six hours straight or playing my, although suddenly we've got like all of these fucking incredible games at my house. I could easily sit there <laughs> and play like uh, Resident Evil 3 for three hours, I'm um, three hours straight, for like 12 hours straight, honestly, just start for pisses and meals. I'm that kind of person. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be stagnant. So, yeah. Um, I, what I'm shocked is that how you like somebody who gives you structure, but then you also hate being told what to do. Isn't it mad? <laughs> Isn't it crazy? So, this, and, and I 100% agree with you, right? So, I don't like being told what to do, but I like being provided for. <laughs> <laughs> So it's very delicate. So it's very delicate. And I'm trying to explain this um, to, I'm trying to explain this to Ed. Like, you can't tell me what to do, but you can lightly suggest that this may be okay. <laughs> and then I have to that see the benefit. Guy. I have to see the benefit of it. And then I'll accept it. <laughs> so when I told him on Friday, he was like, oh, well, you can do this and you can do that. All the things that I'm saying I can do. And I was like, what I don't need is advice uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> what I do oh need days. is you to listen to what I'm saying <laughs> and then I'll work it out on my own. Thank you. <laughs> that poor guy. It's mad. And I like, listen, I know it's me. I know it's me. I know it's me. And it is mad, isn't it? Like, so there's a fine line, like, because authority is just awful. Like, it's just, you know, someone tells me what I should or should not be doing. And I'm like, I know what I should or fucking should not be doing. Thank you fucking very much. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you speak to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh this is days. why um, I needed a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Kudos to your relationships in the past and good luck to Ed. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Exactly, exactly. But I'm working on it. Look, listen, I'm working on it, okay? Um, you at least acknowledge that there is something to work upon. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, and I do do better with. Although I'm open about my um, aversion to like authority figures, I am so much better at dealing with, you know, given authority. Like honestly, and and I'm happy with myself and like the way that I've changed in that respect. Um, it's just I I still get this like inkling sometimes where like my back will go up real quick, but I don't do anything <gasps> with it. Whereas before I used to be like who are you kind of thing that never happens anymore and at work and you know other places and even if you think about yeah. this and i want to talk a bit about this is like you know the the rules about going outside and stuff at the moment is um in my past that would have been something that i'd be like i don't fucking care i'm going outside um yeah. who the fuck are the police kind of thing but you know now mm. i'm like no absolutely not we need to be responsible you know we need to care about others so yeah it's crazy um how do you how do you do it how do you do in like in um in the bedroom when somebody's been a bit dumb would you be like uh, excuse you me 100 percent um yeah i can't be told what to do in the bed either so if someone needs to look after me they need to make me feel good but i'm the same like i'm not someone who's super super dumb in that respect like i need to know that the person is enjoying it or that i feel like it's mutual kind of thing um Ooh. but like where has it happened before it hasn't happened much to be fair because you know like people just tend to fall into roles and i feel like yeah unless i'm wrong or maybe it's just the type of people that i go for but there's always this like um assumption that because i'm quite a big guy and stuff that i'm always going to be um the dominant person mm -hmm. um you know because i look really hard and stuff um so <laughs> uh 
it's not often that people people want i don't know my experience is people want me to dominate them so i don't have to deal with that too much it did happen recently where someone broke my bed and <laughs> i was like um okay well he takes me out of the two people out of the two people i wouldn't have th- i would have thought that person would be more dumb no 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 Given this is the- another person you've had your bed broke twice Listen, it happened in stages, okay? But one time, <laughs> the last time, it got destroyed. I mean, like, literally, like, metal was bent. But the, oh. pers- the person was bigger Jesus than me. Christ. So imagine, like, um, and he was just this big oaf. Like, he was just, just oafy, you know? Like, just just there. And he was a little bit drunk, I think. And then, like, he takes me and like, oh, that was really good. Like, can I see? And I was like, literally, I have no interest. Um, oh. Well, I had to change my beds like you know that's going to be beds <laughs> listen that's, that's a sign of a good time no 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 it was not because well he was like i feel so bad and i was like you should feel bad um but what he doesn't know is that it's happened in stages <laughs> um oh yeah. so no i don't deal well with that well, authority well there we go um how's your week been oh my week's been okay same old, you know, isolation. Another day, isolation. I see you're smashing Another your day. family at Catan, though. Well, I beat... Do you know what I think? Oh, is that the only I time you post you know when you win? Uh, yeah, I won. <laughs> 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 I won that game. Um, usually my mum wins, to be honest. She's quite what? good. Well, no, no, You are so no, bad at games. The... You are so bad at games. It's not even fucking funny. Your mum... It's, it's... It's a roll of a dice. It's the game is a roll of the dice. Um, she, we only the first game I played of her. She, we only played to six, and she won. She got to six first. But um, yeah, no, I we, oh, it's a tough game. It is. Like, I think it's easily become one of our favorite games over here. It's a classic. It's, like, it's so good. Yeah. I don't. Did you it's play it with just? Is... Did you play it with just you and your mum though? Because I'm not a big fan of playing it with just two people. No, it's only always me, my mum, my brother. Okay. So always three. Yeah, um, and we're playing pandemic later on oh i didn't know you got that did i yeah yeah i bought the two at the same time oh. um i've not pushed i've not pushed about it but me i've played it with my two brothers a few times now um they really love it uh and then tonight it's going to be me and my brother here and then my brother's girlfriend is going to um stop by uh, not stop by but come in via or, online oh that's good you can do that one yeah yeah, with pandemic because you, you you play together, you're not. They, she can just be part of the team and give opinions and stuff, and we can move her part part about because you don't have to. You're not playing by yourself. So. You should get like um, you should get like a, a separate device or a tablet, right? And then use that yeah. and just have that hanging over like the board, so that that could be like the shared screen, and then all of you can look at it from there. Yeah, true. I don't know how we do that. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't think about that actually, like having a camera sitting over the board, and then it's because you see people do that online, don't they? When they mm. do professional YouTubers and stuff, it looks always looks cool. But honestly, my week has been pretty pretty dull. Uh, yeah, nothing really to report my end. You were doing some exercises, which is more than you did here. That's true. I did do. Um, I actually had a really nice. Uh, Mickey and Tilly worked out from their house, and we did a FaceTime together, and. We both worked. We all worked out at the same time, mm. um, which was a lot of fun, and yeah, no, it was good. It was. Uh, okay, I'm sore today from it. It was tough, but yeah. they're always tough. With yeah, man, his. Oh reason. my god, his exercises. Even looking at them on um, on Instagram, I'm like, fuck me. How is this even possible? But I guess it's okay if yeah. you have your in- whole entire gym to yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, well, he, even that, he's like. Because I think he, he, I don't think he's enjoying going to the gym because it just reminds him about how shit things are at the minute. That's fair. But um, he's he, he does go out every now and again. I think he like even at home like his like I, obviously he's one of my best mates. So I'm gonna like I love the guy to bits anyway. But it's just his his motivation is just unreal. He's never down, and I think it's like he was saying about something the other day on the call, and he said like somebody was chatting to him. I'm like I, don't, like, I I genuinely don't know how he, he has the energy to carry other people's burdens so much i think it's mm. great that he does and does. But i was just like jesus christ man he is he, do you know what I, if somebody if it turned out that he was on speed i would not be surprised <laughs> he is not 
just to be clear, he is not on any drugs. At his age just, as well, boy. At 53. At his age. He's able to bounce 50. all around. Do those <laughs> tota bars, as you call them. Tota bars. Tota bars. Yeah. 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 It's incredible. He's the kind of, so like, they're the kind of people, and he's the kind of person that obviously I don't know him anywhere near as well as you do. Where I, and, but from outside, it looks like, you know that 0% I'm talking about where you just push yourself from nothing? He seems to be like, because he's constantly going, constantly, constantly going. And I would never be able to work out in a gym by myself where he's just, like, bouncing around all of these things that he's doing. I, would, I need someone to pull me along, you know? Like, it's just, yeah, like, it's mad. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like... Most people need somebody to hold them accountable for something. Yeah. And he doesn't He doesn't need that. And to me, if I, like, for example, if I'm working it by myself and I'll be like, oh, do you know what? I have to do as many reps as I can in 10 minutes. I'll be like, oh, do you know what? I'll do four. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> but just, he's able to just, he gives 100% all the time. And I just, I genuinely have no idea how he does it. It's amazing. Well, me and my housemate did um, our exercises, which is going quite well. Um, we've we've started to do it outside in our garden like area because you know how like it the living room opens directly into like the concrete garden mm. there it is but it's nice because yeah. it's quite warm um, and the yoga's going well actually one thing I've been really happy with is that we do yoga we do like the hit class and then yoga I'm really really enjoying the yoga like I, I, I never enjoy exercise really that much I can tolerate yeah. it or I can feel the burn I'm like oh I understand the benefits I'm literally in the middle of the yoga. I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm like, oh, this is so good. Um, oh my God. What do you guys do? We got this app called Down Dog that Jordan had told us that we used when we went away. And it's yeah. so good. So you set the time um, and it's free up until like sometime, I think the end of this month, maybe. And then it's like seven pounds a month anyway. So it's not too bad. You set the level yeah. of workout, the type of workout, um, the time that you want to spend in total and then the rep time and the rest time. So we do 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 10 second rest. That's what we do. One time we tried it 40 yeah. seconds and 20 seconds and that was tough when, and 45 minutes was just too exhausting. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then it just gives you exercises, right? And no two exercises are the same. They're just always different, but they're so similar, so similar. And it, we do at the moment we're doing all body, but I think we're going to do two all body, then one upper body because my knees were suffering a lot last week. Um, so we said we right. might give my legs a break. Um, but it's so good because no two exercises are the same, although there are there is like a thousand variations of the same thing as well, to be fair. Um, and then yeah. after we do that, we do the yoga. So we do 20 minutes of yoga. Um, and then you have like beginner, advanced beginner, like intermediate and then advanced kind of thing. So we're doing advanced beginner, as you call it. So the second stage up. So it's not too difficult mm. in terms of, you know, but we're just beginning. Um, and it is, it's good. It's really good. Honestly, I love it. Um, that's good yeah but that's kind of the way that it's good for me to like be held sort of like accountable as well like we do it together yeah I think it is, it's much easier when you work out with somebody so 100% 100% yeah oh. we both had big changes this week though which we haven't mentioned have we? Um, so our hair well I've not done mine yet you didn't do anything no, I'm doing. I, I will. I'm literally as soon as we finish recording, I'm going to record. I'm going to do it. I'm going to dye my hair, hair silver, um, but I have to dye it blonde first because I'm dark. So I'm dyeing it dark blonde tonight, and then if it dries in time tonight, I'll do the silver bit tonight. But if not, I'll do silver bit tomorrow. Did you see? Because I kind of think you're doing it just to impress a guy. Obviously, um, did you see his hair? Uh, <laughs> um, I uh, the guy you're thinking I'm trying to impress is. Um, it's not really the reason. And I have seen this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were chatting this morning, and Ooh, his, every day, he, he no, we're friends. Yeah, I'm just like, um, I know your friends. Yeah, that's what we do. Friends, I'm chatting to you as well. I chatted mm -hmm. to you yesterday. So yeah, I think he hasn't done his silver bit, so he's doing his silver bit tonight. I think I saw on Instagram already being tied. Unless he did it... Oh, has he done it? Um, again. I don't think the stages, but yeah. Well, I think... Um, maybe I've... Maybe I've not missed... How have I missed it? Have you? Have you been on there like, within the last hour? Uh, that's mad. Um, <laughs> no, he hasn't. It's still blonde. Okay. Yeah, it's still blonde. Fair. Um, don't you tell me about my man. <laughs> <laughs> One thing he does do, your man, is eat a lot. Some things look nice. Some things yeah. not so much. But... 
It's like, like I like honestly, right? So, like I like eleven o'clock in the evening, like meals. And yeah. I'm like, can I just what? just for the sake of everyone listening? I, it's not my man. It's just somebody I chat to online. But he does. We were chatting last night, and um, he, and this morning, yeah. Uh, but we're yeah, just friends. We're today. We are just friends. <laughs> I know we're just friends. Just friends. um, we um, he's quite a night because he works in an industry which is quite. Uh, late at night so um, yeah he was just because I was saying to him what are you still up at this is at 2 o'clock this morning it's like what are you still up at this time for and he's just like oh I just I don't I'm a night owl and I'm like alright okay and what were you doing was, up at that time well I got into a really good place in my game and <sighs> I didn't want to that's so I'm late. Obsessed. This is this is what I'm trying to avoid because I was sitting there playing the game yesterday. I wasn't even tired, but I was doing well. Mm. And it got to half past midnight and I was like, listen, I could easily be up until four o'clock in the morning playing this game. I need to stop yeah. immediately. Yeah. I I two o'clock I, I wanted to go to bed. We we watched a really good film last night. We watched a film called Ready or Not, which is a comedy horror. Mm. Have you have you heard about it? No. So it's actually it's a um it's this family, this rich family, and they, they made their money through games, actually, board games and stuff. Oh. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then this girl is marrying the, I think, the youngest son in the family. And uh, part of their family tradition is because they have, because they've made their money from games, they, on the wedding night, any new member of the family has to play a board or has to, has to play a game. Um, and it's like a luck of the draw and she gets hide, hide and seek and actually in reality she goes to hide but the family then hunt her down and if she survives to morning she lives and can become part of the family but if everybody else in the family has to hunt her down and try and kill her does she know that they're trying to kill her? she doesn't know at the start mm-hmm. when she starts playing but she quickly finds out um, yeah she quickly finds out and then she starts hunting them back sort of thing why would you stay with that family? <laughs> For the, well, because usually, like, because she, this, the guy who's married has two it's other siblings, fit. and they're, oh, well, he's two other siblings, and they're both both married, but it's sort of, it's very unlucky to get the hide and seek card, and that's the only one that they kill you in. The rest is like chess and other shit, but um, <laughs> that is ridiculous. It's but it was, it sounded I don't know I I liked the concept and we watched it and it was just it was actually quite funny and yeah it was good. Um, Maybe I would if it's funny. A comedy, some, it sounds a bit gone. Somebody today because at the start of it it all happens obviously in one day and at the start of it she's dressed in white looking really pretty and at the end of it she's sitting um, and she's just about to have a cigarette and uh, well near the end should I say and then uh, it's just like. Somebody posted today on Facebook before and after of the coronavirus, like all nice, and at the end, just an absolute fucking crusty mess. Is it a new film then? Because if there's memes about it, they must have just come out. Yeah, it's a film. I think it was in the cinema last year. I think they released recently oh. released it on home home media. Okay, but uh, should we should we jump into issues? We never spoke about my hair, but okay. It's not that interesting, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do it. Well, Matt, wait a minute, let's go back. No, it's the end of the story. End of is, the story. It's not that interesting. Uh, what have you done with your hair, Matt? I shaved my hair really short. Okay, let's jump. Let's talk about some issues. Excellent. No, <laughs> <laughs> no okay. Let's no, no, talk it's about the story. Go, go, go. No, no, I want to hear more about your hair shaving, because I've seen... Um, your Did you see my picture on Instagram? Instagram? So if you look at my first picture, right, I look fit as fuck, yeah. right? Obviously. <laughs> um, maybe i'll just check these out again i'll just one take honestly because you you know me and you right we're very photogenic it doesn't take very long um <laughs> it's true it's a true story isn't it i can't believe i didn't like that photo do you like I it now no. i liked it now oh yeah. yes it, yep um it'll be my most liked one but i think that's more of a situation that everyone's on their phones more than like <laughs> it, no <laughs> surely <laughs> Surely 90 likes isn't your most liked. Listen, bitch. Okay, you don't need to hot me up. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, no, wait a oh my god. Uh, no, surely it must be in like, well, I think mine is near like 700. 700 I don't have that many followers, thank you. And oh my god, this is really embarrassing. But um, I, had, so <laughs> I cut my housemate's hair today. I was so happy with that. Oh my yeah. god. And then um, he's just posted. 
and it's 36 minutes. No, he posted two hours ago and he's got 107. Um, so oh. <laughs> way more than me. Um, I liked, I liked his before I liked yours. That's horrible. I've got half the number of followers that he does. Um, and why did you do that? Why did I follow like yours before like yours? Yeah. Well, I didn't realize I didn't realize I didn't like yours. I remember looking at it and I thought I must have just liked it. And there's really no one I've gone into. Horrible. I'm a really bad friend. What? How many likes do you tend to get? On a selfie. Oh, I got um, 132 one time. 133. Me and Jordan. That was fit. Who? Which one? Sorry. Um, there's one just underneath it with me and Jordan in rugby stuff. Oh, and yours? Yeah. How many did you get for that? 133. Yeah. Um, and I did, I posted, I reposted this video of Two Bottoms discussing the orgy. And that had loads of <laughs> views. And it doesn't say likes, it just says views. But yeah. that was 600 and something views. So that's good. Um, the one of us together. Oh, no, it's nowhere near years. as much. There's n- nowhere near as much likes. I've got more. Other ones. So. No, Austin Lumineers is 134 for me. Me and you where? Picture of the Lumineers. Oh, so what the fuck? What are you saying? Lumineers. Lumineers. Me what? Me drinking coffee in the park got 758. That is bullshit. How does that? No one wants your stupid coffee things. Like, no one wants that? Um, me, after a workout, got 835. Hold on. You sitting in the coffee... In the park. Where is it? That's mad. How does that get you so many? All of... Oh, I see all the hashtags. You've got a lot of hashtags there. Just gay, gay, gay. Being gay. A unicorn. I hashtag hashtag every picture. Funny, I hashtag pictures of you as well, but they still don't get as many likes. um... (laughs) (laughs) Right, let's get into some issues before we get vicious. You are horrible. You've got a lot of followers there. You've got quite a lot of followers. Um, and yeah, you've also got more than you've got more than ten times the number of posts than I do. Yeah, okay, they'll come be. Sorry, I'll give you some tips. Please do. I do need it. Although I did start a social media advertising course, so I think I'll start. You need loads. to take over me. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. No, please. That's racism right there. What? I'm just gonna call it. Call it. Call it as I see it. Okay. 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 Well, let's jump into some issues. <laughs> Excellent. What do you want to talk about, Ash? Well, one thing I wanted to quickly talk about was uh, uh, two things which are not really linked, but they're sort of linked. They're both about coronavirus. So, um, do you know that... Well, first of all, I've seen it. Did you see anyone this week? Because it was April Fool's week. April Fool's Day this week. And, yeah. Um, did you see anyone post any... A stupid post that would have been April Fool around coronavirus? No, I didn't. I had a couple of people on my Facebook feed post things like, hey everyone, uh, uh, isolation is being lifted on Friday. Or, Horrible. You know, something, something stupid like that. And I know these people are not, I know these people and they're not the type of people who are malicious or evil or anything like that. But just a stupid thing to post. Um, what I mean, it's just... Uh, and there's this... I remember it made the news, sort of, like, pop culture news. I can't remember what he's in, but this uh, celebrity had posted that he had caught coronavirus and t- uh, put it on his post up to all his fans, like over 2 million followers, and he said he... Then he, a couple of days later, or hours later, I can't remember... He then said, oh, actually, I didn't have it, but it was all about a lesson in, like, learning how to self-isolate and stuff like that, and, like, stupid, but people are, um, yeah, people spent April's full day spreading incorrect facts about coronavirus, which is tough, given there's already so many incorrect facts floating around, but to, you know, do that as a practical joke, I just thought was in poor taste. 
because it was going around on Twitter oh. being like, oh, you know, and should we cancel April Fool's Day? Now, I'm not a huge fan of practical jokes in general. Um, yeah, I don't like so, them. No, I'm not, they're not, like, I think they're cheap. Um, they're not funny either. No, I don't think so at all, especially when it's at someone else's expense and it's just like, nah, I'm okay. Um, yeah. But then it was like, should something like that be cancelled? If it's something that's not related to the subject, as in it was completely unrelated but funny, I'm like, okay, anything that's humorous should be out there for sure. It's just, it's just not, but that's not a game. Like, it's not a game to be like, oh, the, this is going to end or I've caught coronavirus or anything like that. Like, that's not funny at all. No, well, Google this. Google this year announced that they will be taking the year off, and they they usually do quite a good prank. Mm. Um, but it's not like not putting anybody's health at risk. Um, but yeah, they said they're going to take the year off and sort of give people some time to like respect what's really going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm sure other companies did the same. But did you know that in Thailand, um. If you were caught sharing incorrect information about um, coronavirus, you could get up to five years in prison and then a th- I guess thirty thousand dollar fine. No. For yeah, for sharing incorrect information in Taiwan, it's three years in prison and night and up to ninety nine thousand dollar fine. Um, and then like in the U.S., if people who threaten or are caught spreading coronavirus um like purposely out of just because i've seen a video of this girl or some guy walking around oh like, god did you see it yeah the guy in the sh- hand and- oh no i didn't see that because i saw this guy going around in like shopping malls and stuff and, and like um shopping and then it reached out people getting in their space and stuff and they literally what the fuck are you doing like it's not even a joke and you'd be like oh, uh, yeah i don't know what happens say someone's spitting in the hand well i've seen a video of somebody like, spitting on their hand and flicking flicking at people no um yeah, I'm sure I've seen that, unless I made it up, but I'm sure I've seen that. I'm sure I have. Um, but in the US, people who are caught sharing or threatening to spread coronavirus, they're getting they're going to get hit with terrorism charges. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it is. And do, you remember a couple of, do you remember a couple of years ago, people used to have this thing about going into ice cream in shops and open up the ice cream and then like putting their hands in the ice cream and then re-putting it back. And they put them back in the shelves so I people feel like, buy it, yeah. take it home. So yeah. Could you imagine? That's disgusting. That's horrible. No. My brother yeah. my brother was in um this is why he said he'll never use them again. And I don't think he ever did actually. But I, sometimes I think, oh I wouldn't mind getting an olive from the olive bar. But you know, like he was in Morrison's and then and this is Holloway Road, so this is like just like where I live and stuff, so it's not like a super nice area where I'm from. And you know, like just the open salad bars that you can you mm. put the stuff in. He said he saw this woman just get her hand, scoop up the um, potato Ooh. salad, and just start eating it. And then, like, just, just like, <laughs> scooping it. Obviously, like, she's crazy, whatever. But he was like, I've never eaten one of those things again. And ever since then, I've never, ever, I don't think I ever did it much, but I do love a potato salad. I would never I get it from, salad. yeah, I would never get it from a self serve. Never. It'd have to be from behind the counter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or pre I. I'm such because I, because I have um, obviously, I don't like talk about it, but celiac. <laughs> um, I know it's so difficult to talk about these times. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but I always. I, <laughs> I need to give you this book. I always. Um, what book is it? Gluten is my bitch. Oh, I've seen it on your shelf. I was going to ask to take it, but I've already got so much of your stuff at the minute. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just I like to my I like my food pre packed. So, Absolutely, yeah. I just don't like yeah, but I always, I always remember back in when I was younger, bars used to put like open plates of peanuts at the end of the bar, like salty peanuts. Because no they still do it in America. Salty. Like when you go to American places, they still got like pretzels and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And oh, do you remember? Were we did we go to the Eagle one night? I remember I was I was definitely with Drew and Mark McCabe, but were you there? And they just served like chicken wings in this fucking <laughs> sleazy bar, at, like two in the morning and I'm like what is this this is magic what for free <laughs> it's like yeah they're laying on the bar I was not there them? boy I was not there but I wish I were <sighs> yeah well did you eat it I, I, I didn't eat any because I, but I wanted to like if I didn't have like again like what I talk about if I didn't have celiac <laughs> disease <laughs> I would have gobbled so much that would not have been in my housemate because like um, 
one of our friends keeps accidentally getting their foods delivered here because they ordered off of delivery once while we're well, here playing games. The... <laughs> <laughs> of course. We were, we were recording the podcast <laughs> years the, the McDonald's got delivered. Yeah, yeah. But um, on the first time it happened, KFC chicken came, a chicken burger. And my housemate is vegetarian. But he was so drunk at 2 o'clock in the morning, he just hammered it. And then he got the vegan, glu- uh, the vegan KFC burger. And he was like, God, it's just nowhere near as good. And he was like, I haven't oh. had meat for so long. And he just smashed it while he was hammered. It was so bad. <laughs> um, uh, bad. Mm. Um, there is a the news about like, um, and I just read it in the BBC now, that someone's trying to say that everything about the coronavirus has got to do with someone trying to set up 5G. Um, and th- it's got to the point where it's literally in BBC news because it's spreading so much. And they have to speak to technology people to tell <laughs> the world that this is in fact not the case. Well, of course we know it's not that, don't we? Because we all know what it is. It's because it's um, the legalization of same-sex marriage and abortion. <sighs> and it's punishing us. Honestly. Why is this not... 5G? No, it's because gays can get married and women can have their have abortions. It is, it's true. It is our fault. Yeah. Again. Again. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know Netflix Oopsies. are going to do like um, a true life, like, what's it, a true crime documentary? Because everything... It's the gays' faults at the moment. Tiger King, <laughs> Aaron Hernandez, don't fuck with cats. The gays are fucking everything up, boy. Seriously. We are. We're, so, you know, it is our fault, you know. And by the way, that was a tweet from a DUP politician, John Carson. Um, he says that he blames same-sex marriage and legalization of abortion, and that's why God is brunishing us with coronavirus. You reap what you sow, is his opinion, but apparently not the opinion of the DUP, whose party he... Um, represents and also uh, they he did I think he did issue an apology um, I didn't it was not an it. apology he said oh, I didn't mean to offend anyone but I still stand oh, by yes. my beliefs and Christian faith and this is what it teaches me and this is that thing that you always I think you always talk about it as well where people just hide behind their religion uh, hide their own views yeah. behind um, a religion but it's no these are your views okay these are your closed minded mm. views and just stand by your own beliefs don't say it's because of religion yeah, yeah, if I would have more respect for you if you just came out and admitted you're homophobic, I, you know, yeah, there's like, I think it was time when people are like, oh no, I don't believe gays can get married, but I, it's not because I'm homophobic, it's just because of religion. It's like, no, no, it's it's homophobic. No, it's like, because you're scared. It's homophobic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I can't remember what we were talking about. I think we were talking about fried chicken. Fried. Oh, do you know what I did chicken. do that? I did make myself some fried chicken the other day. Because I've been cooking and stuff. So I made this really nice tagine, this aubergine and lemon tagine. Everything has to be veggie with like dinner. Um, and tomorrow I'm making a chickpea and courgette stew with cheesy dumplings. Oh. Which I'm so excited che- about. Oh, is vegetarian not vegan? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's vegetarian is not vegan. <laughs> so we can have dairy. No, but yeah, okay. I'll just check in, just check in. Um, I got a some crazy hot PT who lives near where I live posted a video a, a recipe for his fried chicken which was chicken breast dipped in egg yolk dipped in ground almonds and then lightly pan fried mm. quite and, nice. and then I was thinking I went back so this is good but to make it better add some Cajun spice add some paprika uh, you know mix it in you need to do that yeah yeah Say it again. You need to add seasoning. Like it's mad that the coating is just the coating. But then you would be able to eat that, so you should give that a go for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this. Like, it's not me slagging my mom, but like, <laughs> you so... do run that bitch through the ground. I said to God. This is why you got rivalries so... when it comes to games and shit. It runs know, deep. We right. So mom decided, and I told her off yesterday. So she's like, "Oh, we're gonna have roast pork tomorrow." tomorrow. And I'm like, "Mom, why do you need another roast on a like?" She was a Sunday. I'm like, "Mom, listen, just FYI, don't go overboard." Like, she's like, "No, I won't." But of course, she's like six hundred different vegetables going like three types of potatoes. <laughs> and I was like, "Just the, mom. the thing is, like, and I was sitting eating the food, and it was the most bland thing." <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that it's sounds... like an old day's work <laughs> stop it stop it stop it stop it stop it and I know that sounds I know that sounds <laughs> stop it 
Right, I'm going to wait for you to calm down a bit. <laughs> was this today? It was earlier on, yeah. Oh, was, God. Today. Oh, my God. And, oh, deep so, my eyes. Oh, but stop. honestly... Listen, honestly, and she had all of the vegetables. She just <laughs> boiled them all. Uh, she made... She made oh. mashed potato, which tasted the exact same as the carrots. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, they're supposed to have different tastes. No, no. And, and, you know what? and there was no amount of gravy that could bring any flavor oh, to that no. meal. And I was pouring on. Oh. You need to get that I swear. salt. You need to get that salt on it, boy. No season on oh. anything. And I was like, Mom, this is. this." Well, I haven't said, but I've planned that I'm going to go down later on, make a little cup of coffee, and I'll be like, <clears throat> Mum, I think what you should maybe look to do is perhaps instead of trying to make a lot of stuff, focus on making fewer stuff really well. You need to leave your mum alone, right? Like, what's it say? Let sleeping dogs lie? Like, look, it's done. It's done. She's not going to change. She'll be cooking this way for no. however many years. Leave it be. Leave it. I have to eat the food, Matt. It's That's the problem. Else I, I, I get that. I get that one hundred percent because like every time I go and visit my mum, um, she'd be like, "I'll have some dinner with us." I'm like, "No," and I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make some dinner when I go home, and I'm starving. <laughs> I'm starving. And then she'll come yeah. and she's like, "Actually, I'm, and sometimes she did it before. She'd be like, oh, "I actually made some just in case." It's just on the side, and I look at them like, "I'm so mm. hungry." No, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm like, oh, thank you. I just have some water. <laughs> do you have any ice cubes I can chew upon just, just something <laughs> wouldn't it be amazing if like your mum was like an incredible cook like oh my god I would absolutely love that if my mum just if I grow up with like amazing food I would have fucking Matt, loved that my mum went to catering college and she no she cook. didn't I swear she went to catering college and she cannot cook she, when when she finished school, she went to catering college. What my, my mom makes, tell me what my mom makes really, really well. My mom makes like good, wholesome food well. Like she can make a mean stew or a mean cottage pie. Do you know what I mean? She makes them really well. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes, when it comes, when, I think when it comes to other things where it's, you know, more technical, mm. um, she messes it up. I'm sorry. And I need to, I'll, I'll say, look, I said, I'm going to say to her like next week. If she wants to cook dinner for next week, let's have a really nice shepherd's pie or something. Let's mm. let's have mm. something a bit more in 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 your in field. your warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I will say this because I, I'm not a huge fan of roast dinners in general because of that. Like some people think, and I guess maybe it's like an old school way of doing it, where it literally was just like chop the vegetables, put them in the oven. And nowadays, like it's just not acceptable. Like you need to make these honey glazed carrots, and you need to do this like sautéed cabbage kind of situation. Do you know what I mean? Because mm, it's just not yeah. like. You know, times have changed. You know, you need to yeah. you need to put some flavouring in your food. Um, that being said, roasts yeah. are not that great. They can unless you put a lot of effort into it. You know what I mean? I make a good roast. I'll say, if if I was, you know how you made me that amazing breakfast when I came to yours after yeah, yeah. Um, not, ha- not not having sex, but it, it's your after sex breakfast. Mm. Do you I, know? What? Yeah, go on. I was my my go to is a roast. If I wanted to make somebody feel special, I'd cook them a mean roast. Oh no, no, I'd never do a roast. I never do roasts. I'm not very I good. But to be fair, I'm not very good at them. I think because I've never done it because I don't because I don't buy into them. I don't make it that often. Mm. So like, yeah, I'm not great. I'm not great at them. To be honest, um, I'd like to like make my own gravy, for example. But um, oh, I've started another breakfast, which I'm super super excited about because I've been trying to have like quite veg rich food, um, and. I, I'm always a bit... I think vegetables are really difficult to make flavoursome, right? Unless you can do mm. it. So mm. what I started doing is making like a Spanish tortilla type of thing for breakfast. But I boil the potatoes, right? And these are new mm-hmm. potatoes. Cut them into small cubes. Boil them. or well, parboil them. And then let them sort of... And then empty them. And then I've covered them in some sort of flavouring. So then they're dead in turmeric and chilli powder. And that's it. And a bit of salt. Mm-hmm. Then left it. Then the next day... I roasted them and then started getting my omelette ready, which was like loads of veg, red peppers, onions, tomatoes, um, things like that. And then in the egg, I put um, a little bit of turmeric in the egg as well, just a little bit. And then I made the omelette and I put the potatoes in and it was so good. I've got oh a second God, breakfast now. Yeah, honestly, it was so good. Having those potatoes ready 
na- boiled, flavoured, then roasted, and then put in the omelette. Oh my god. Un- so good. Unreal. Honestly, it's really good. Really, really good. I've got another one. Um, just jumping back in, uh, the other <laughs> big thing I want to talk about, which uh, I just, I'm just curious of time, that's all. Um, the other big thing I want to talk about was there has been a reported increase in domestic violence due to coronavirus because it yes. was locked in the house. Did you read this? No, I saw this about a week and a half ago and I'm only going to talk about, I had a topic in mind to talk about, but yeah, I'll just tag it on and not talk about it too much afterwards when you finish this bit. Cool. I'll, 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 I'll always do this. I just want, I think it's quite important to say, but obviously the, the circumstances were all, we're all suffering. Um, we're all obviously uh, locked up, but for some people, they have it a hell of a lot worse. Mm. So it's been reported that by, on, by some organizations, so 25 organizations in the UK have reported that there's been an increase at some level um, on domestic violence uh, reports. Some of them have reported it's been three times as high, obviously due to people wow. being isolated and families together. Yeah, so that's a hell of a lot. Well, you know, in China, um, so um, now that China's everyone's allowed out, um, the, yeah. the application for divorces have risen <gasps> dramatically. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Mm. Like, you know, some in some states in the in the, in the US, uh, it's been an increase of 40% of domestic violence. Oh, wow. Um, what's interesting is South Wales in uh, just over in our... Uh, in, your neighbor, neighboring country, Wales, South Wales, tweeted. I seen the tweet where they had warned how isolating. If if people are worried about isolating with an abusive partner, that they can silent call for help, which is they can dial nine 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 and then five five, and that will silently call for help. Um, if they're too scared to talk out about uh talk, because obviously in these in. A lot of a lot of cases, if people are suffering from domestic violence, they can't leave the house to go get help. They're stuck, obviously, mm. um, isolating. And um, obviously, another big worry is our because I and I think the UK have sort of messed this up. They're very unclear about what you can do outside the house. I think it has been made clear that um, they the well, I don't know if it's been made clear in the UK, but for example, in Spain. Uh, which is one of the hardest countries hit with coronavirus, but people are getting issued fines for leaving the house. If somebody is a, is a survivor of domestic abuse, they will not be issued fines. 100%. Um, and in Greenland, they have actually, in what, their capital city maybe, they've banned the sale of alcohol because they attribute the violence to alcohol. So they have banned the sale of alcohol during the coronavirus to help decrease violence. Um, so just to finish off this little bit, uh, domestic violence is not okay. It's also not your fault. And if you do need any help, do try uh, the silent call help on 999 and then follow it up with 55. Well, there's a couple of things, like even just with that, because I was reading just before we started that there is um, a charity, an LGBTQ plus charity called the Albert Kennedy Trust, and they've warned people that they should think hard before coming out at this period of time because of the current situation. If your family don't accept you or they reject you, then this could increase your chance of, you know, you don't have anywhere else to go or you might end up being, you know, a rough sleeper anyway. Um, But people are having to live uncomfortably in their households while, you know, with their family members who don't accept them for who they are and in some cases can be, you know, in some way abusive. Um, and it talks, yeah. and then there's another article that's similar. It talks about this dancer from Birmingham who had moved away from university and then was on tour. So he didn't have a place of residence because he was moving with this moving tour, you know, after his university. Yeah. Uh, and then because that had stopped, it's performer that stopped. He has to move back home. Um, and his mum and his dad um, are, and it's described as abuse in in the article. You know, don't accept him and are very are highly religious. And using that to say that they, that, you know, they don't accept him, and he feels obviously really uncomfortable and not safe in his own house, which is, you know, it's an awful, awful thing, you know, to go through. Imagine being stuck in this home without people being, you know, accepting of who you are. I mean, I not that it's the same, and I don't mean to like, like put myself in it, but I felt 
when I, you know, I didn't have the best experience coming out, but I'd stayed in the same household and there was like elements of that kind of thing going on, you know, although I did have this choice to yeah. leave, I just didn't choose to leave. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And, um, how mad is it that everyone's going outside at the moment? Oh my God. I, that, uh, I, was yeah, like, I think it's crazy. Cause we were talking about fines and the kind of country that we are, we, you know, we've never been like, you know, a dictatorship or whatever, you know, I don't know what the right word is, but we've never been so forceful in terms of how people should behave. And, you know, people go outside, police are there just to say, can you please move? But nothing beyond that kind of thing, you know, not heavy fines or prisons and this and stuff. Yeah. So my brother drives up to this big park. Um, he's going for a drive, mind you, just to get out of the house. And also because he's from London, mm. he's definitely not going for a walk or a cycle. And he's gone for a drive to get out of the house. And he drove up to this place called Alexandra Palace. I don't know if you know it, but it's like this huge um, venue hall that also has this surrounding greenery on top of like this massive, massive hill. It's really nice. He said it was stacked with people. And there's a park in London that had to close today, Sunday, uh, because yesterday, Saturday, it was full of people. And they were like, you just can't do this. Like, you need to... It says, or maybe we haven't been so clear, but it says you, can, you should leave the house once a day for exercise. Sunbathing is not exercise. And unfortunately... No. Although, and this is where it gets a bit grey. Like, if you're there playing with your children and having a picnic, I guess at some point playing, you know, getting social interaction and walking. But it's for an extended period of time, you know, and it's just a bit like... Um, yeah. So there were some suggestions. Some people like putting out suggestions on Twitter, different politicians, because you know a lot of people are taking this opportunity to basically say that all of the other politicians are dealing with this badly, especially the current government. Which I don't want to say yes or no to, because I think anyone would struggle to be able to come up with what exactly is doing this situation. You know, it's unheard of. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that there could be rotated times to go outside, like because you know young people with parents and things like that. You know, children need to go outside more, for example, and things like that. And I was like, um, I don't know if you can rotate it, to be honest. No, I think it'd be, it'd be hard to manage. Like, like it's, it's, uh, well, I actually posted about, I don't know if you've seen my post on Facebook, but I actually posted about this earlier today when the when the news broke about potentially exercise outside having to, um, having to stop. And I just said, basically, the government needs to be clear about what the rules are because at the minute there's too many vague and grey areas that people can bend them to suit what they want. Also, people need to take responsibility for their actions, even if bending the rules, even if bending the rules meant you could get out to the out to the park. Um, is it really a good idea? Like, take this thing seriously. Well, that's what I mean, because um, the government can put like clearer guidelines, which they haven't. Fair enough. But I also think that people are flaunting and taking the piss. They're not being like, well, yeah. you never said we couldn't do this, but it's like, but you know better. Yeah, and and yeah. I know we can be exactly strict, being like you can be out for thirty minutes only one person no long no more than a mile from your house for example like they could say that but it might have to get to that point yeah you have to, that's yeah yeah I, just, I find it people i get i mean i get with i get i get with kids and i get with dogs but people who are out there sunbathing are you a fucking i, I don't get it unfortunately you don't have a garden or a balcony or whatever that sucks but you're actually literally killing people by being outside. It's just insane. Well, someone within the Labour Party had said, like, well, it's easy for people to say with big gardens and, and big houses. Cause, and what was really get, got me is, is in this article in particular, and maybe it was skewed, but it was BBC, that it was pretty much exclusively London, right? Um, mm. That the people were going to these parks and stuff. It, and it said that in Brighton, um, there were people at the beach the day before, so they sent out a message. And then today... It was like a ghost town. No one was there. And, you know, that has a beach in the water and a lot of people will go outside. But they'd listened to what has been asked. You know, they reacted and listened yeah. to the warnings. But instead, we're just choosing just to be like, well, fuck it. You know, and it is. And, it, you know, London, yeah, space is like um, a commodity. You don't get much of it, and especially outside space. And everything is like concrete. But it's priorities, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Mm. Crazy. Oh, did you have anything else you want to talk about, Boo? No, no, not at all. You sure? Yeah. I oh. think so. We'll, well try and find something happy. Be... I'm gonna look because I've got because now I've got loads of time free. I'm gonna look for something relatively joyful or topic based next week that isn't. Well, I, I tell you what, it's only been two, but I don't want it to be Corona every single week. Although that's tough. No, I don't want it either. But I tell you what's just happened. Um, I can't pronounce his name. But I'm going to describe him in a way. I think it's it Matt the other Smith. About... Who? Matt Smith. No. No, I'm joking. Um, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt's husband, uh, John Kreisko or something. No idea. Um, he's used to be in the American Office, and he's in that film with Emily Blunt. Oh yeah, yeah. In the Quiet Place. I know who he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, handsome, tall, dark-haired guy. He has started a YouTube channel which only reports happy news. So he does like two minutes a day. <laughs> well, he had Steve Car- he had Steve Carell on the other day, um, and they were talking about stuff. So, um, if you want a bit of happiness in your life, that's something that's awesome you can check out. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to compl- continue playing Red Dead Red Dead Redemption. How's it going? Well, do you know what happened the other day? I'll tell you this. Um, I stumbled upon this couple that live in a cabin. And you sort of go up, walk up, and he calls you in from the road. He's like, hey, we don't get many visitors around here. Why don't you come in and have a drink of us? And then his, his wife comes out and starts like hanging off him and being like, oh, you didn't tell me we're going to have guests. I would have done myself up. Uh, and then as an automatic reply, my character goes, oh, you know, I can't really come in. And then he, the guy's like, oh, you can't refuse hospitality. And he's like, okay, he comes in. And, and then he's sitting at the table and he's like, oh, my, my wife, or she's just upstairs. Why don't you go up and get her? And I'm like, well, that's a bit weird, but you can't really do anything else until you go up and get her. I go up and I hunt around that house because I thought you might as well rob the bastards while I'm in the house. So I <laughs> hunt around the house. Well, this is what you do. You need, I need money. And I open a cupboard and there is a human skull in that cupboard. And I was like, whoa. So I go back downstairs and I sort of then question the guy i'm like oh why, why is there human bones up in that cupboard upstairs why would you I'm ask like, oh, him that well it's what you have to do okay. like it's part of the role play um and he's like oh that's mama we couldn't bring ourselves <laughs> to bury her and i'm like right okay and then you go up and then you go into the room again and she's there getting ready she's like oh hello you blah 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 and then you say why is there human bones out there uh and then She's like, oh, well, I just, um, that's mama. Uh, we couldn't bring ourselves to bury her. And I'm like, well, that's a bit weird. So you go down and then they serve you food and you sort of, you, you can't get out of it at this point. It sort of continues. And you take alcohol and you start feeling really dizzy and really drunk. And then they're sort of like getting really suggestive and like being like, oh, we should all play together, blah, blah, blah. And then in the middle of the conversation, they talk about how they're brother and sister. Oh, my and God. And the guy's face, my character, my hot boo, he's just like, whoa, what? So then I did the natural thing I would. I punched him, <laughs> hogtied her, put her on the back of my um, back of my horse, and he's quite overweight. And then I sort of galloped off slowly, like so he could like always keep up, but then not quite get us. And we went over fields, and we came back to the house, and back over the fields, and back over the house. He was chasing And I just killed him. Yeah, oh but he's really God. fat, so he's really slow. Nice. Um, and then um, I killed him and then killed her and then robbed them and then left. This game is fucked. This game, my, I honestly, I was chatting to my brother about it today. I was like, I am obsessed. Like, there's, honestly, what happened? I was in a train station buying something in the train station. In the background, I'm just like, not even, it's not, you know how most games are like, make you focus on something? In yeah. the background, you can hear people talk. And this this random conversation this woman was saying. She was just like, oh, I heard funny noises coming from the, the gun shop. Uh, like some sort of like screaming or something. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. That's funny. I thought I'd go to the gun shop and check it out. And I walk around the back of the gun shop. There's somebody calling for help at the back in a wee window. And if, if I, obviously, if I hadn't overheard this conversation, I would never go out the back of a shop. Like You have no reason to go out there. Mm. Anyway, and it, it triggers in this side mission. I have to I have to go in, rob the gun the man who owns the gun shop, get him to take me downstairs, where he has a ha- he has this kid held captive, in a tr- he he's dressed him up in a sailor suit, and he has chained him to the wall, um, and you so I hog tied up the guy who runs the shop, you get so you sort of get bad points if you kill people even if they're bad people or not um, uh-huh. sometimes, um, so I just left him tied up. Um, set the guy free and then I robbed the shop um, but yeah man, this game honestly this game is just I can understand why it's won so many things it's just such a phenomenal game mm. there's too many good games to play now it's like TV because like 
we've I'm playing I got a new game on Friday which is Resident Evil 3 and I've only just started yeah. playing Metal, Metal Gear Solid so I don't know if I can like balance them both like I have no idea what to do and I ordered a game I went for a little binge before I realised that I wasn't getting paid um, mm. <laughs> and another game is coming next Friday and then uh, my housemates brought like two or three extra games and I'm like fuck sake computer games or like board games computer games so now oh. so um, now we've got three playstations in the house because we're all just in our own room just playing games <laughs> oh this it's is crazy like this is this is crazy um yeah oh that's sad because you guys are quite good you guys are like the fun house to be at yeah but we can't be sitting there playing games with each this is probably me then i can't be sitting there playing games all day like because we have dinner every day with each other that's one thing we do, do. Oh, that's nice. Um, except yeah. I was really bad. Sometimes I took my dinner away because um, there'd been like Zoom calls booked in for like 7.30s, which when we had dinner roughly. Um, yeah. So I'd be like, sorry, bye. But most days we do. <laughs> um, and then we have like, a, we still have games every couple of days or most days, but it's just, it can't be all day. It just can't be. And no. Plus, yeah, not. like just no way. Yeah, I need that time. Are they, are they, are both your housemates, are they both furloughed or no, no, are they working from home or what's happening? Um, one of them is works for an um, an airline, so they um, had like things in place where they had reduction in pay and hours and things like that. So they're not under the, he's not yeah. the same scheme, but it's been he- he's been heavily affected by um, what has happened. Whereas um, my other housemate hasn't yet. Well, I say it hasn't right. at all. So their work has not changed. So two out of the three has been affected by this so far, and then yeah, see what happens. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm going to go dye my hair now. Ooh, exciting. I can't wait to see the mistake. Yeah, I can't wait to shave it all off. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Lovely. No, no, oh, are we chatting a half seven again? Um, yeah. yeah. What's, how does this work tonight? Um, it'll be a Zoom chat, and I need to speak to Jordan about this, but um, this maybe is for after the podcast. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. And I hope you're all having a sane and healthy week. Okay, so stay safe, everyone. And please, please, please be mindful of going outside. Oh, yeah, and protect other people and protect yourself. Bye. Bye, Ashley. Or, bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.